This is CBC Here and Now. Good evening, I'm Anthony Germain. And I'm Ashley Brawweiler. Well, it happens this time of year. Every year, our special Feed and L show, as uh, we have a really different kind of here and now in store for you tonight, helping food banks right across Newfoundland and Labrador. And don't worry, I'm still here with the weather. I'll have all your forecast details heading into the weekend coming up in a little bit. Special music, donations, all kinds of fun stuff on this Friday night. But first, sending things back to Debbie now with a look at today's top news stories. Thanks, Anthony and Ashley. Let's get to tonight's top story. The province is in the most debt it's ever been in. $14.7 billion. That's about $28,000 for every person living here. And as Here and Now's Katie Breen tells us, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Auditor General Julia Mullally released a report today looking into the province's finances. And she has some concerns about government's plans to get Newfoundland and Labrador back in the black. Government's goal is to start running a surplus in four years. But the Auditor General says getting that done with the current plan is going to be tough and risky. Government is predicting continued increased production in oil and increased prices through this forecast period. So as we all know, again, those particular um, sources of, of income are, are volatile and they're really not under control of our government. Per capita, this province brings in some of the most money in the country. The problem is government also spends the most per person. We really do have that spending problem that has continued to build up over time. And I think government's focus really needs to stay on sustainably reducing that expenditure level. Government's plan is to cut spending by $400 million over the next four years. A deep cut, the Auditor General says, will be difficult to do. The Finance Minister says he's picking away at it now, eliminating severance payments in the public sector and reducing the amount of government vehicles and leased space. It's like planting trees. Each of these initiatives is a tree. Uh, we're now seeing the fact that we've got a number of trees. It's starting to look like an orchard and, and it's starting to bear fruit, uh, but we've got to be patient. So does the Auditor General think getting to a surplus by 2023 is doable? Well, she says that's hard to say, but in the meantime, until the province is operating at at least a balanced budget, the debt is going to keep growing and keep breaking that highest ever record. Katie Breen, CBC News, St. John's. Newfoundland and Labrador's Auditor General says she has not ruled out an investigation into the province's controversial $40 million deal with Canopy Growth. In November and again yesterday, opposition leader Chess Crosby called for A.G. Mullally to investigate. Crosby is raising questions about a land deal involving Canopy Growth and a numbered company. And he's questioning why Canopy was picked for the lucrative cannabis manufacturing contract and whether taxpayers are receiving fair value for their investment. Earlier today, Mullally said she has a copy of the contract and is looking into it. I have started some work in that area. I do have a copy of the contract uh, between Canopy and government. I have met an initial meeting with the deputy minister of the department. Um, and there are meetings being planned for January um, with the uh, PCs and, and also uh, the NDP has asked for a meeting as well. So I'm hoping in a position, you know, to, uh, to be able to, by the end of January, look through that information and to determine if there's a, a a reason, I guess, to proceed with an investigation. The town of Happy Valley Goose Bay passed its largest budget yesterday. In favor of the motion, contraminded carry. And that's thanks in large part to a big project in town. $16 million of the $36.5 million is going towards a new recreation center, which is slated to be completed by 2020. Some of the other highlights include replacing some of their aging vehicles and adding some equipment to help clean up sand in the summer. It's also piloting a position for a seasonal animal control officer. Mayor Wally Anderson says they will be able to do it all without raising taxes. Uh, no tax increases, uh, no, no increase in the water and sewer, uh, no mill rate uh, in increases. Uh, you know, we're uh, investing, uh, we're, we're going to do some road work, uh, we're buying some new equipment. And uh, to us, that uh, this is a, a budget uh, hard part for, well put together, but one that we believe the people of our town uh, will look upon uh, and be very favorable in, in, uh, in this budget. 
A new plan for wiping out tuberculosis in Canada's Inuit communities will try to tackle the underlying causes of the disease. That's according to the head of the National Inuit Organization that helped produce the strategy. Inuit Taparit Kanatami President Natan Obed says improving food security and access to housing will fight the disease and benefit northern communities. Just this year in Maine, at least 50 people were treated with either suspected, confirmed, or latent cases of TB. A report into the deaths of four people in the province's jail system over the past 16 months is finished. But as for what was discovered, the government says those details might not be released until the new year. Here now as Ryan Cook explains. Absolutely cannot comment uh, to the substance of the report right now. Absolutely cannot say anything about that at this stage. Again, uh, hard for me to comment on uh, the report, what's in the report or anything like that uh, without going back on what I've just said. So I will Andrew Parsons isn't speaking about the report until the families of these four people have seen it first. Doug Neary, a father of two, took his life alone in his cell at HMP in the summer of 2017. Sky Martin died at the Clarenville Women's Prison in the spring. Staff says she choked on a piece of food. A month later, Samantha Piercy was found dead in the same facility. And then Chris Sutton, in June, ended his life in his cell. Government hired Marlene Gesso, a recently retired superintendent of the RNC, to write a report on their deaths. It's now done, but it won't be released until each family has seen it on their own time. Some have indicated that they'd like to see it now. Some have indicated that they want to wait till after Christmas. And we will be respecting the family's wishes on that. Parsons says government was doing its best before the report and before the deaths to improve conditions in the province's jails. We've had this tragedy hit us that we're trying to work through. I would say that we, we've managed to make some changes, some, but some are going to require, uh, you know, different conversations. Conversations like replacing Her Majesty's penitentiary. The federal government says there's no money committed yet, but they're open to having conversations about replacing this 19th century jail. Until then, Parsons says he trusts the staff there to make do. They do their best in a facility that's not exactly geared for this century. Uh, so I, I trust in them that we're all going to work together. Families could be viewing the reports as early as next week, just in time for Christmas without their loved ones. Ryan Cook, CBC News, St. John's. A notorious con man who was last arrested in St. John's has surfaced again in Ontario with new allegations against him. A business owner in London says he can't pay the bills after he trusted Donald John Cameron to supervise his restaurant. This was the last time Don Cameron was seen on the news being sentenced to six months in prison. He stole a car from this dealership and made a break for the ferry in Porta Basque. Cameron has 100 convictions around the country, mostly in Ontario though, for a wide range of offenses, especially for fraud and theft. He was released from jail last spring but surfaced in London. And that's where a restaurant is in turmoil. Some employees at this restaurant say they haven't been paid in weeks. They've even started posting letters around the block and picketing outside. The owner says the problem started after he hired Cameron to supervise the restaurant. Now it's a tangly story, but we have the full details outlined in a story on our website. That's at cbc.ca slash nl. The national president of Mothers Against Drunk Driving has secured the Liberal nomination for the District of Topsail Paradise. Patricia Hines Coates was acclaimed after no other candidates came forward to run in the upcoming by-election to replace Paul Davis. Hines Coates is the stepmother of Nick Coates, who was killed by a drunk driver in 2013. She became involved with MAD following his death. Paradise Town Councillor Paul Dinn is the Tory candidate. The MB NDP hasn't put out a call for candidates yet. And those are tonight's top stories. It's time to hand things over to my co-host at the Avalon Mall, and that's where I'm heading right now. Here and now, special Feed NL show is set to begin. <laughs>
Welcome to a special edition of Here and Now, our Feed and L version, live from the Avalon Mall. It's all in support of the Community Food Sharing Association, helping food banks across Newfoundland and Labrador. And as you can tell, we've got quite the choir here, Holy Hearts Alumni Choir. You'll meet them a bit later. I'm going to skedaddle right now, though. I've got some presents to wrap up. I'll leave things with Ashley. Because it takes a lot to put something like this together, and I am now with uh, Amanda Malloy. She's one of the CBCers who helped put all of this together. Uh, so, Amanda, walk us through what's been happening here today. So today at the Avalon Mall, our CBC hosts and personalities, along with a whole host of volunteers from the Community Food Sharing Association, have been lending their talents to wrapping gifts all day, all in support of a great cause at the Community Food Sharing Association. And of course, we've had events right throughout the province. Right. So uh, you can donate from home as well, correct? That is correct. You can donate online if you go to cbc.ca slash feednl. Look for the bright red donate button. You can't miss it. There's still time to donate. And it's not just today. We can donate for how much longer now? So we're accepting donations for the entire month of December. So right up until New Year's Eve, you can make a donation in support of the Community Food Sharing Association. Do we have any idea of where we're sitting right now as far as donations go? We do. Unfortunately, I can't tell you that just yet. You'll have to wait a little while longer. And that's because we've got potentially more donations on the way? Exactly. You got it. All right. Okay. So um, I guess you'll have to stick around to find out just how much uh, was donated today. And uh, so this is Amanda Malloy, Senior Communications Officer with CBC NL. All right, so right now, if you swing things around, looking at them all, here we are, we have a whole bunch of singers. Dr. Valerie Long is the, do I call you a conductor, director? Uh, all of the above, and okay. a accompaniment, accompanist oh. as well. Okay, the uh, big boss <laughs> of the choir. Yes. Um, we're going to play some music in a bit. So tell me a bit, there's, how many women are here? Um, right now, I think we have about 70 people here from the choir, but we actually have about 110 uh, in our full membership on a good rehearsal for Monday night. So this is how many were able to come out and to support this cause today. So I couldn't be happier. Well, neither could we. We're so delighted that you're actually here to sing and perform for us. you got a big uh, anniversary coming up? We're celebrating 20 years this year. Um, in 1999, we came together to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Holy Heart High School. And this this year, Holy Heart is celebrating its 60th year, hence the 20th year for us. Right. Obviously, some trolleys going back there with some uh, very... Bang, 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 yeah. went the trolley. Excellent, yeah, some very ambitious shoppers with lots of stuff back there. <laughs> Uh, so tell me, how does a choir like this stay together for so many years? What's, the, stay, what's the secret? The secret is um, uh, camaraderie and friendship. Um, we have lifelong friendships that have been made with these women in the choir. They all love to sing. They leave their troubles at the door on Monday nights, and we sing our hearts out. We've traveled the world. We've had over seven European tours. So you join a choir, get to go see Amsterdam, and uh, we just love life, and we all share that spirit together and couldn't be happier to be here to share in this well, tonight. That's fantastic. All right, so let's uh, see some of that love of life. I'll accompany you over here and see you do your thing. Now, do you want to give me a sense? You want to surprise us, or are you going to actually give us some idea? I'm not proposing as much as it looks like I might be. Uh, what are we going to start off with? Well, I think we'll uh, sing number seven on the song sheets. Number seven! Seven on your song sheets. We have a lot of shoppers who stopped by and they're just interested in hearing us and we gave them song sheets. Okay. That's what we do. We Perfect. just don't perform. We sing with other people. All right, live and a... Came upon a midnight clear. It came upon a midnight clear live and a special edition of Here and Now, our Feed and L version. This is the Holy Heart Alumni Choir.
my goodness. It's from both. There. I know you're going to give me grief this morning, right? Yeah, I am. We don't hang around here. We only come for a coffee, and yeah. then we leave. But, God, you said it like we were here all day drinking <laughs> coffee. No. And I glued on, like, the, the pointy top end, and I just started kind of going down, like, make you know, making like oh, a circle okay. around. And eventually, about 50 shells later, it'll turn into a tree. The smallest a donation can go a long ways. Welcome back to the Avalon Mall. I'm Anthony Germain, a special edition of Here and Now. And this is Peyton. Hello, Peyton. Hi. I'm glad to see you here. Um, me too. You all ready for Christmas? Yeah. Okay, well, listen, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and uh, a great Happy New Year. Thank you. All right, Peyton, thank you very much. <laughs> a lot of young people here, a lot of people of various ages here. Glad to see so many people make it to our special Feed NL show. Hope you can make it too if you want to drop by. If not, just keep on watching. A lot of people braving the cold to be here. And as far as cold goes, well, my expert, of course, our expert, your expert, is our meteorologist, Ashley Brawweiler. So, Ashley, of course, we still have to get through what the weekend's going to bring. We do. I'll let you handle that. Yeah, the temperature is right now not terrible, not as cold as we saw earlier this morning. If we take a look at those temperatures, sitting around minus 2 for St. John's right now, single-digit temperatures, minus single-digit temperatures temperatures across the province for the most point even uh, nice and warm up through Labrador as well uh, sitting around seasonal uh, even above seasonal for this time of year at minus 10 for Labrador City so as we head through the next little bit we are going to start to see some snow move through overnight tonight and then uh, eventually we'll see that snow spread across the province particularly for mostly Newfoundland. We're going to see snow and then uh, eventually change over to rain as we head through the afternoon tomorrow. And that's mainly for parts of the Buren and then around Clarenville and then towards the Avalon Peninsula as well. We'll see that uh, change over to rain, but not before about two to four centimeters of snow falls into Sunday. It looks like things will generally clear out and then eventually uh, we will see uh, maybe a few flurries up through Labrador. It doesn't look too bad. As far as flurries go, mix of sun and cloud, and those temperatures are actually going to stay nice and warm through the afternoon. So uh, here's a look at your snowfall map. We're seeing anywhere from 2 to 4 centimeters, as I mentioned, across the province. Uh, along the west coast, though, we could see closer to 5 to 10 in the higher elevations. That could be closer to 15 centimeters of snow into, uh, into the afternoon. So uh, taking a look at your forecast into Saturday and Sunday, those temperatures generally Generally sitting in the minus single digits across the board. We're going to see again that snow starting on Saturday or at least overnight on Saturday into um, overnight tonight rather into Saturday and then eventually clearing on Sunday. Those temperatures not too bad up through Labrador as I mentioned well above seasonal sitting around uh, between minus 7 and minus 8. Should be sitting around minus 14 this time of year so definitely welcome there. So that's a look at your forecast. Uh, I'll have your weather photo coming up uh, a little bit later if we can get to it. All right, excellent. Uh, obviously getting the weather. It's like you've done this before? Just okay. a few times. Now, normally, if we're back in the studio and I did this... Oh, no. Ashley would disappear because this is green and well, the magic green screen. I know. My, right? my jacket. Or my That's what ha would happen. Now, when it comes to wrapping, as you may have seen in our promotions, uh, I'm not very good at it, but we decided to have a little face-to-face -face kind of competition when it came to wrapping today. And just for the record, I am very good at wrapping. Yeah. Judge for yourself. This is how the contest went. Check it out. All right, Ashley, a no holds bar wrapping contest. I'm not sure if it's beauty or speed, but uh, three, two, one, go. Okay, my paper's zipping already. <laughs> That happens, rookie. That might be okay in the north, but that's not going <laughs> to cut it here. I'm stressed right now. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> that's a tricky one you chose. Time! No. <laughs> now, I have to say, <sighs> simple box. You had this thing. And look at it. It's beautiful. You, just, you know what? You can actually leave this out. Oh, that's what I was... Oh. And then ribbon it around here. Now he's giving me advice. Next year. All right. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Good 
kaboom. So there you go. Cheater. That was not cheating. No, that's uh, the aggressive kind of competitive juices flowing that's natural in the news business. You know what? That was not natural for me. I could not. I couldn't do it. And that thing on the top actually went down. I was making it hard I on myself. I know. I didn't want to tell you that because it would be too easy. Now, uh, Jeremy Eaton, of course, who is a reporter here now and often comes and hosts from time to time. You know, if I'm not feeling well or if Debbie's taking the day off, those kinds of things. Uh, he had an observation to make. You'll see him. He's right behind there doing the <laughs> rapping thing. I think he's rapping. And you had uh, something you wanted to add. Oh, I, I wanted to make a joke. Uh, that's a rap, Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> right. Wait, wait, I got more, I got more. Cut it out, yeah. Ashley. That's uh, <laughs> Jeremy Eaton, one of the biggest Wayne and Schuster fans you'll find in Newfoundland and Labrador. Uh, we'll be hearing more from you at some point. I think we're going to hear more from you right now, actually. Are we? Okay. So I was here today uh, at the wrapping station. I did not wrap one present because I'm terrible at wrapping presents. While I am a snazzy dresser, much like you are today, <laughs> sir. Uh, I like this. That is very nice. It's kind of like Debbie Cooper's collar. <laughs> This is right. Did, you, did somebody leave this in the changer? Because yes, yeah, this Ryan's looks not familiar. Maybe, but I got to say, it's really snug on me compared to how it fit it on It looks him. good on you, buddy. <laughs> looks good on you. You know what else looks good? All the people who were wrapping presents here today. Yeah. So we got a bit of a tape. Uh, we got a bit of a tape. We got a bit of tape. If we could roll that now, Rod, that would be great. The song gonna be here a while. I could be here till midnight. <laughs> Just me and you. <laughs> I am finishing off whatever I have to do for Christmas shopping. Are you done your Christmas shopping all together? I am totally done, and this is awesome that you're wrapping the gifts for me. Hello, how are you? Nice to see you again. I remember this year. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do you think of Christine Davies' wrapping job there? On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the number one, buddy. That's a 10. And uh, how good are you at wrapping your own presents? About a minus two. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an awesome thing that you're doing. And I used to drop off turkeys, so now I'm going to here give you a donation for doing this for me. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, I want to introduce you to Mackenzie here at the Avalon Mall. You've been patiently, have you been enjoying the music? Yeah. Excellent. And now I want you to see something that's really cool about Mackenzie. First of all, obviously a beautiful young girl, but can you just turn around? Check this out. This is the latest in reindeer gear headwear. That's fantastic. Listen, I want you to have a Merry Christmas, okay? You too. Thank you very much. All right, that's Mackenzie. So there you go. Maybe if you're going to a Christmas party, you can steal a tip from her. Now, uh, today's all about fundraising for our food banks. Lots of check presentations. There's a certain curler in town of notes. Well, there was quite the check presentation earlier today. I'm thrilled to be able to present the Community Food Sharing Association with this check for $5,000. Um, as you know, we, uh, we ran a contest uh, earlier this week uh, with the team here that uh, every person who's posted about tackle hunger and, and hunger issues in Newfoundland um, got a, you know, we, we agreed to donate a certain amount of food in response to all of those postings. So we're thrilled to be able to present this uh, check to you and we hope it uh, goes a long way to help uh, prevent hunger issues in Newfoundland and Labrador.
only thing you can see is all that you lack. Now come on up to the house. Well, all your crying won't do you no good. Now come on up to the house. Come down off your cross. We can use the wood. Now come on up to the house. You got to come on up to the house. Welcome back to our special Here and Now Feed NL edition here live at the Avalon Mall. And all is well again because the person who is normally standing next to me <laughs> is back where she belongs, right here. And uh, I'm glad you made it so quickly. I wouldn't let you have all this fun to yourself. No, that's, that's fair enough. This is a enough. happening place, mm -hmm. a happening show, wonderful people are all around us here. Yeah. And all around, there's plenty. A lot of people have plenty at this time of the year. But then there are others who have to turn to charities for some help. The Single Parents Association is one of those charities, but this year they're finding that their donations are really down. It's a big problem for them. I dropped into the SPAN offices early this week. Have a listen. And I'm here now with the executive director of the Single Families Association, Elaine Balsam. Uh, Elaine, thanks for having me. This is uh, where you've collected many things for hampers for single parent families, yes. but you don't have enough. Uh, what is the situation? The situation is we need food gift cards for our single parent families, and we need gift cards for our teenage children. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough to meet the need of 100 families that will come here next week to get some help for Christmas. Mm. I understand there were 300 families registered with you back in October. As you say, there's, you're still short for 100 families. Why do you think donations are down so much this year? I think they're down because of you know the economy, businesses have closed, uh, some have changed their focus on what they donate each year. Employees, uh, some have been laid off. Some just don't have the income anymore to make that generate, you know, donation to mm. us. Now, you mentioned about gift cards and everything. What mm -hmm. exactly uh, would you welcome? Well, we would welcome any Sobeys uh, gift cards in any denominations. Uh, also, gift cards for teenagers. They can be for McDonald's, Sobeys, movie, uh, Avalon Mall, Walmart, uh, EB Games, any of those would be fine. As we can see here, there's lots for younger children. As you mentioned, yes. the teens are at a difficult stage of life, yes. aren't they? Yes, they are, and they're often the ones that are left out. But I find, I've been talking with the families, and those children really those teenagers love gift cards. Mm. And you mentioned 100 families that uh, you still need to provide yes. for. That doesn't even count some emergency situations that might develop. That's true, Debbie. We could help as many as 50 plus families who will come into our office and walk in for any number of reasons and have nothing for Christmas. Hmm. Not even, so we want to be able to help those too. So Elaine, you're, this is crunch time now and yes. the stand pickup is next week. Mm -hmm. If somebody is moved by yes. this conversation to donate, what should they do? Well, they can simply pick up a card and drop into our office at 472 Logan Bay Road. Uh, we are open from 9 to 1 and then from 2 to 4.30, Monday to Friday. They can call us at 738-3401 if you want more information. But just pick up a gift card, drop in, and say hi. Merry mm -hmm. Christmas. Okay. Thank you so much, Elaine. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And Elaine Balsam did tell me as well that uh, they would welcome any donations of food, non-perishable items, of course, at uh, the SPAN offices. One thing that Elaine did say about those gift cards that uh, kind of stuck with me, she said it really gives people dignity because they are in control of what they're going to purchase. So I thought that was a really nice sentiment. So let's find out where Anthony is right now. All right, uh, we're going to shift to one of the important things. Of course, Debbie talking about people in need and the whole event and the reason we're here at the Avalon Mall for our special edition of Here and Now. Our feed and edition is, of course, to help raise money uh, for the food banks across our province. Anne-Marie Fleming is, uh, 
an important person in this choir. Uh, I don't want to say number two, but let's say you're the vice president. Very close. Oh, okay. There's two number ones. How there you go. Okay. <laughs> first and first among equals. So what do you do with the choir? Uh, I'm basically, I guess, the manager, the chairperson, and uh, co help coordinate the things that Valerie needs done. And um, we have you're the worker bee. Probably, yeah, there you go. That's a good term. Because uh, Valerie mentioned earlier that you've gone on world tours, so there's some travel involved, big choir with all 100 people. So what's it like organizing all of these people and getting them on a bus or a plane? It's a dream come true. Really? Sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, we pretty well have done seven tours now, so we pretty well have it down to a science. And everything works really, really well. We've had some wonderful, amazing trips, some real highlights. Uh, we sang at Beaumont Hamill in 2008. Uh, on July 1st, that was a wonderful experience. And um, just a few years ago, when we were at the uh, festival in Italy, uh, Valerie surprised us with the wedding, and she and Jeff got married that day. So oh, that's good. We didn't even know she was getting right. it was happening. Did she make you pay for it? No. <laughs> oh, okay, well, that's good. That's good. So listen, um, talking a little bit about money now, uh, you have decided, kind of taking us by surprise, you have something to announce. Yes, we do. Uh, uh, our choir is a registered charity, so all the work that we do, we do for charity. So we are here today and we're going to uh, donate $500 to the Food NL, to the Community Service Sharing. And here it is. So a uh, round of applause <laughs> and some music. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And of course, the choir is doing their thing, so um, they've been playing actually for an hour before we actually went on the air. So let's hear a little bit more music, some Christmas music from the Holy Heart Alumni Choir.
We want to be able to help people. Well, so if we have to stand in the cold for a few hours, we stand in the cold for a few hours. It's amazing. We have such a wonderful community for all the ones that come out to stand in the cold, to direct traffic, to bring in the turkeys, to stack them in the truck. Well, it might be a little cold on the outside, but the heart is pretty warm here this morning. They just really don't have a whole lot type of thing. So if we can help them have a good meal on Christmas, help them with some food for the week or so after, with some gifts for the kids and them, sure, why not? Lots of uh, activities here, but uh, Certainly. we just saw some tape from Labrador Morning and Happy Valley Goose Bay. They had their their part in uh, Feed NL today. Certainly and do. let's see, they received 400 turkeys, a ham, and $1,500. Not and bad. And a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> yeah, way to go, Big Land. That's fantastic to hear they're doing really, really well up there. Uh, we mentioned the whole province uh, covered. The fantastic crowd here, Deb. Yeah, really, yeah. really great. Mm -hmm. Great fun. So, you yeah. have a guest that you're I do. going to speak I with? I do. As uh, Debbie knows, I'm kind of fond when it comes to feline creatures. And there has been a story in the media of late, and it's about whether it's appropriate or not to give pets at Christmas. I used to think that the wisdom was don't do it because they come back. Heather Hillier is an expert veterinarian at uh, the city shelter for animals. Yes. Nice yeah. to see you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. And I must say, I love your Christmassy suit. Oh, wow, no problem. I suspect we have the same tailor. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so where do you stand? What's what do, what do veterinarians think about the whole idea of giving pets at this time of year? Is it yay or nay? Oh, it's a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, not a straight answer. Every family is different. Every household is different. And every pet is different. Um, it's exciting for everyone, and Christmas is exciting. We want to share that. But as you can see, for this little one, she doesn't necessarily appreciate the Christmas spirit. No, she doesn't. Quite well, she's the beautiful. Same. Yeah. So we have to understand it's overwhelming and stressful to go to a new home for a pet. Okay. Um, and Christmas is a bit more overwhelming in a lot of cases. So what we generally recommend if you're going to introduce a new pet is to do it maybe a couple weeks before Christmas, let them be settled in before the madness starts. Okay, yeah, and of course all the or, ribbons and stuff. Yes, or maybe after Christmas, once all the we've settled out into the new year. Um, if you're a quiet household with not a lot of comings and goings and it's just a lovely quiet time off for you over Christmas, it may be the most appropriate time to introduce a new pet. But I guess in some cases, if you do your research and you know for a fact that uh, Junior has always wanted a little cat or a puppy, and as a parent, you're convinced this is going to work. Maybe getting a pet at Christmas is so special, it'll make that kind of bond where someone's going to really want to take care of that animal. Right, yes. And we just, we just have to respect the pet's needs when we do that. Yeah. Now, here's your chance to actually do a plug for the St. John's situation. What, uh, what's it like at the shelter right now? Um, as always, we're humming. We're busy. It's unique this year in that we have a lot of kittens still. It's not typical that we would have kittens in the Christmas season, okay. um, but we do this year. This is little Mickey, and uh, Mickey is one of about 25 cats that we've had come through the building in the last couple of weeks. And a kitten, too? Uh, kittens, sorry, 25 kittens. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is, uh, it's strange for us this time of year, so we're still hopping. Um, we're still looking for homes, but uh, everything is, is a... Um, Individual basis, you know, we want the, the best pet for the best household at the best time. Okay, I think I'll get Eddie, our cameraman, to uh, take a look at this. I'll get you to turn a little bit. Now, so listen, for all of you Grinches out there, for you heartless souls at Christmas time, how can you resist a little furry creature like that? So if you have been thinking about getting a cat or a dog, this may be your time. Actually, get you to turn around. I think she's a bit camera shy. Oh, yes. Yeah, there we go. Right. So there really you go. Like so for you, cat. there you go. So for you Grinches, <laughs> right? So do your thing, head out there, and, uh, and get yourself um, a kitten or a pet. Of course, only do that if your family's ready. And uh, just don't be such a Grinch. There's lots of beautiful animals, and they want you to own them. Thank you very much, Heather. Thank you. All right, I'm going to send things over to my colleague, Ashley. Well, that was absolutely adorable, but I'm here with someone else just as cute. This is Lydia. Hi, Lydia. Hi. <laughs> what brings you here today? Are you uh, watching the choir? Are you excited for Santa? What did you ask Santa for? A Barbie house. A Barbie house? I asked for that when I was a little girl too. 
Are you excited for Christmas? All right. Well, we'll have more excitement uh, when we come back after the break. The bowling alley, pool, cinema, and more. Everyone wants in. Lane's Retirement Living. Sorry, only for seniors. Best wishes to Josephine Strzok, who's 98 years old today. She's from St. John's and is now in Cambridge, Ontario. Birthday greetings to Pearl Goss of Tilton Conception Bay, who turned 92 this Wednesday. Happy birthday to Emily Cavell Goodyear of Shoal Harbor, who was 94 on Monday. A very happy 100th birthday to Millicent Moss of Princeton Bonavista Bay, who celebrated yesterday. Happy 96th birthday to Jane Oram of Glovertown. Congratulations to Aubrey and Kathleen Chin from Hillgrade on their golden anniversary coming up on the 18th. And a happy 61st anniversary to Raymond and Eileen Blundell of Hickman's Harbor, Random Island. They celebrated on the 9th. And 52nd anniversary greetings to Doris and Gary Reed of Port Saunders, who celebrated on Monday. Also celebrating on the 10th, happy 63rd anniversary to Frank and Diana Hope of Mud Lake, currently in Great Bra. Les and Pauline Parsons will celebrate their 52nd anniversary this Sunday. And congratulations to Nathan and Violet Yetman of Bay Roberts, who celebrated their 70th anniversary on the 7th. Congratulations to James and Alice Norman, who will celebrate their 55th anniversary coming up on Sunday. Happy 97th birthday to Bert Morves of Deer Lake, who celebrated this Wednesday. 90th birthday greetings to Audrey House, whose special day is Monday the 17th. Enid Pittman of Rocky Harbor celebrated her 91st birthday on the 7th. Happy 92nd birthday to Edna Sacre of Robert's Arm, who celebrated on Wednesday. Edna is now living in Springdale. And birthday greetings to Sam White of Gander, who'll be 97 on December the 17th. And a happy 56th anniversary to Walter and Margaret Alcock of Leading Tickles. They celebrated on Wednesday. And it's a golden anniversary for Nellie and Sydney Lewis of Newstead, whose special day was yesterday. 
And a happy 62nd anniversary to Henry and Fanny Lynch of Spaniards Bay celebrating tomorrow. There you see them with their first great grandchild, Gracie. And a happy 59th wedding anniversary to Marjorie and Harold Nash of Fortune, who will celebrate on Monday. Happy 62nd wedding anniversary to Josiah and Patience Paul from Gambo, whose anniversary was on Wednesday. And a happy 50th wedding anniversary today to Eddie and Cheryl Dwyer of Gander. Chesley and Lavinia Howell of Paradise celebrated their 73rd wedding anniversary on Wednesday. Happy 59th wedding anniversary to Eric and Marion Humphreys of Northern Arm. Sam and Barbara White of Gander will celebrate their 69th wedding anniversary December 20th. It's 60 years of marriage on Christmas Day for Donald and Louise James of Springdale. Happy 90th birthday to William Legg of Sweet Bay, now in Kellegrews, whose birthday is next Tuesday. And happy 50th anniversary to John and Rita Dernford of Burgio. Another fine crowd this week. Congratulations to everyone. And uh, it's, I guess we're going to find out how successful this day has been. Right, stay tuned because we also have one more great Christmas tune for you. That's all after the break. one of the big things about this. Have you enjoyed your first one? Good. Yeah. It's so it's nice good. to see everybody here good. taking part in it. Great practice because we'll be doing these for a long time to come. I want to check in now. Uh, Debbie has somebody who's very special here? at these events, so I'll throw things over to Debbie. Association. Nice to see you, Egg. Always a pleasure, Debbie. You know that. Must be a very long day for you. You've been up at uh, the crack of dawn with our morning show here in St. John's. The clock went off at 5 after 6 this morning, so, <laughs> yeah, no, it's been an absolute great day in the parkway. Yeah. A lot of people over, and your horses were there, and a lot of people coming in with donations, and certainly it's been very attractive here to, at, the, at the mall tonight. And, Egg, just talk about the need this particular year. Well, the need this year is pretty well consistent with what it's been over, over last year. You know, we, we have some pockets in the province that uh, need more help than others, but uh, generally, you know, the demand has been consistent, and... You know, thanks to your listeners and your viewers, we're going we're gonna to put a lot of food on the table this Christmas. A lot of people involved, very generous. Now, we, uh, for years, many years, there was a turkey drive, and we've changed things up a little bit. I know 
turkeys are still welcome. But talk about uh, the, I guess, the, the need for more money and how you can use that to your better, to better advantage. Well, you know, without the money, you know, we wouldn't be able to acquire as much food as, as we do. I mean, last year we acquired and distributed about $18 million worth of food. 18 million. Yeah, so I mean, it's very important. And, uh, you know, we have great people like uh, Newfoundland Labrador Credit Union were, were here today, and uh, certainly the choir, the choir tonight with a $500 check. And the grand total, you know, so far has been $66,500. Now we, now we know that there's quite a few checks coming in next week. People have called us, so it wouldn't surprise me, you know, we hit somewhere between ninety dollars and $100,000 out of this drive. That is incredible and so badly needed, unfortunately. Um, so uh, I guess this is going to carry on, as you say, into next week. And I guess a reminder as well that the donations that are coming in are going province-wide, aren't they? Yes, the, 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 the donations that come in Happy Valley Goose Bay stay there, same way as in Corner, Corner Brook, and the same way as in Gander. Mm. So it's, it's important that... Uh, and we ship to all parts of the province. We ship up into Nain, so it's it, it's the, the cash donations are really what makes that happen. Hmm. Egg Walters, it's always a pleasure to uh, chat with you at this time of the year, and I hope you have a very happy Christmas as well. And to you and yours, Debbie. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And let's head back to Anthony. All right, well, as you can see right now, some bright lights. It is Christmas time, but this is an especially bright light. Uh, because Wanda and Ella have come here with a very, very significant announcement. Wanda, you're with RBC? I am, yes, thank you. And this is all about fundraising for our food bank. So what is this we have here? This is $20,000. This represents RBC's contribution to the community food sharing this year. RBC is very committed to helping our clients and our communities, and this is one way we want to give back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, from RBC, $20,000 to Feed NL. <laughs> So I want to thank you very much, but I want to point out, because Ashley, Ashley Brawweiler is always looking for really good here and now fashion advice. <laughs> and uh, Ella, is this the new Yeti outfit for winter? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> it's very, very soft and it's cozy. It's soft. I think that'd be great for the, the green screen. I definitely wouldn't disappear. Anyway, thank you both very much for showing up and, and appreciate the generosity and a Merry Christmas. Merry Wonderful. All right, so uh, I'm going to get Debbie to come back and join us now because I know that she's on the other side of the talking heads. Get back with us as we say farewell from our, our special show here. So uh, it's quite the night. It's quite the night. And I just want to say before we throw it over to our fabulous singers here, you can still donate until December 31st. It's not over today. So think about it and make that donation. All right, we can count on you again next year. Uh, me? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. <laughs> So listen, from all of us for here now, thank you so much for dropping by the mall. And for those of you at home and on Facebook Live for watching us, have a great Christmas. We'll see you back on Monday, and we're going to go out here live from the Avalon Mall with another song from the uh, Holy Heart Alumni Choir. We'll see you on Monday. Good night, everyone.